Hi, welcome everybody to the Coffee with the Pros. Uh, this is John Clifton. Thank you for joining us for today's session. I'll be doing the presentation today. Uh, just to note, your mics are off so that uh, we won't have any background noise in the recording. You can certainly submit questions, though, uh, using your GoToMeeting dashboard. And we will answer those questions either by mail or by phone uh, as a follow-up. And then uh, the last thing is that we will send you out an email with the link to this recording uh, within about 24 hours. So anyway, thanks again for joining. Uh, let's get into this right here and go ahead and take a look at what we're going to talk about today. So, um, but first of all, let's just uh, let you get a little bit to know, uh, know a little bit about us. Uh, we're Dyne365 Pros. We're a silver cloud uh, relationship partner and uh, we've been working with CRM for many years over 10 years uh, have over 200 implementations and we specialize in CRM that's all we do and we work in CRM from the very beginning of uh, discovery and uh, requirements gathering and definition all the way up through the implementation customization uh, etc we do integrations Certainly want to train you folks and then uh, also provide long-term support. We want to have long-term relationships with our clients. So today's topic is connections. And uh, if you're familiar with connections and you use it, uh, then you probably know the benefits of it. But uh, if you don't and you kind of looked at it and you go, what the heck is that? And it looks kind of complicated, et cetera. We're going to try and shed a little bit of light on that today. So uh, we're going to talk about, you know, what connections are, typical scenario that uh, you might run into uh, that would be a place where you might want to use connections. Then we'll go in and uh, look at some creation of connections and connection roles. And then we'll talk a little bit about advanced find. Um, so let's go on and jump right in here. Connections can be a little confusing at first, and especially to the end users. And uh, that's too bad, but it kind of has to be that way because you're trying to create a link between two sets of records that don't normally have an established relationship between them. So in uh, Dynamics 365, you can do that with a connection record, and it's a great way to associate those kinds of records that as I said, you normally can't put together. Uh, everybody knows you can associate contacts with accounts and you know orders with uh, quotes and you know all sorts of pre-established relationships. But these connections are very flexible because you can't possibly build in every type of relationship into a database that's that's possible. So you can just go in and actually uh, create these connections uh, on the fly. And uh, it makes it real handy, and you know you can use it for some very specific types of relationships, or you can make it more general. It's entirely up to you. And the, the, another great thing about this is that you can add additional fields to the act connection form uh, and the entity, so that uh, in, if you do have some you know specialized needs for this, and you need to capture some more information that's relevant to that connection, you can go ahead and in customization, uh, you can use the out of the box tools to go ahead and add fields and put them on the form and, and even uh, do some things with workflows and uh, business rules if you need to, uh, assuming that you're in the uh, a version of D365 or CRM that, that uh, supports that. So it's pretty handy. All right. So as I said, this connection record is a link link record between the account and the contact. So you don't have a reference on the account to the connection. You don't have a uh, reference on the contact to the connection in this example here. But what you do have is a connection record that has references to both the types of records that you're trying to link together. And so that serves as the link or the core of information that uh, brings those two records together. <clears throat> So a typical scenario that we come across off and on certainly is that, you know, you've got uh, professionals in the medical industry, such as doctors and uh, technicians, etc., who may work at multiple locations, and some of those locations may be related to each other, some of them may not. So a doctor could be uh, 
doctor at a hospital, and they may actually be associated with multiple hospitals. They may have their own medical office. Uh, they may serve at a clinic, etc. So, as you know, you can only associate uh, a contact with one account at a time in Dynamics 365. So then the question is, well, how do I, you know, show those other relationships in the database or in CRM so that I can see them and, and kind of keep track of things? And, you know, it's uh, not easy if you can only have one association at a time with an account. So that's what we're going to use connections for. And what we're going to do then is take a look at the um, a D365 instance here, a sandbox, and so we've got some sample data in here that will help us illustrate some of these principles. Uh, so version 9.0, if you haven't seen it, it's pretty pretty nice. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to get your own instance upgraded uh, as soon as you can. It's, it's, it's good. Um, so anyway, we've got in this situation some sample data that shows we've got a couple of clinics called Specialist Clinic. One is the main headquarters and in Mission Viejo, California. The other one is a satellite office, if you will, in Vista, California. Uh, and as you might imagine, each one of those clinics or accounts has their own set of contacts that are uh, linked to that account as being uh, their primary company, right? So we'll see that here in a second. Okay, so in this case, this main clinic has, just wait for the refresh, there we go, uh, two employees right now, uh, Annalisa Martin and Jeff Thomas, and they are definitely associated directly with this account because they are contacts for this account, and in fact, Annalisa is the primary contact for the account. However, we also know that the Vista office uh, has its own set of contacts, and we've got Bob Weston and Steve Taylor, Bob's a cardiologist, and the difference kind of here is that Bob actually floats between the main headquarter office and the clinic in Vista. So maybe he's here in Vista for three days uh, of the week, and then he goes up uh, to the headquarters for a couple of days. So how do we reflect the fact that Bob Weston is also associated with the uh, main headquarters account? And again, we're going to obviously do that through connections. But we also first need to go ahead and define uh, what kind of a role uh, that we're going to establish that links the account and the contact in this particular relationship circumstance. So I'm going to go up into sales and click on settings and go to business management. And then down here to connection roles. <clears throat> And there's a whole bunch of out-of-the-box roles that are already here, as you can see. Uh, what I've done is to define a couple of new relationship roles that I want to use when I say, uh, when we indicate in CRM that Bob Weston is uh, associated with the main headquarters account for Specialist Clinic because he works there a couple days a week, even though his main association is with the Vista Clinic. So let's go in and take a look here. Uh, these two roles are uh, defined easily in here, so you can open up the form. You Probably the biggest, toughest part sometimes is actually just coming up with a name for the both ends of the relationship. Some things are easy. Uh, you know, if you look down here, you've got uh, employee and uh, employer. Those are easy relationship names. Obviously, we're very familiar with those. But sometimes it's kind of hard to come up with, uh, okay, well, I'm working uh, at a certain location several days a week. You know, how do I how do I put a name to that? So I've just kind of put here other account location uh, as far as the uh, account that Bob will be associated with that that's describes the relationship from the account end and then you can see here that I've also limited this the use of this role to only accounts and so you don't have to do that but in this case I want to have a real focused use of this co connection role and I only want it to be used for accounts and contacts where we're moving people between offices or you know different hospitals and offices etc so uh, we I went in and uh, added this information and it did a save. And then once I did that, I could come down here and also then create the matching connection role because uh, there's a location that's an other location, but then there's also a person or a contact that's an other 
uh, work location for them. So basically I clicked on new and add, uh, added another uh, connection role. And as you can see, this contact, it's, this is limited to being used only uh, with a contact. So a, this is going to then be linked as well to the uh, other account location role. And so whenever we have either one of these, either the other work location role from the contact point of view or the other account location role from the account point of view, um, there's automatically going to be the other half of the uh, relationship is going to be created by CRM. And so I don't have to worry about doing that. So let's get rid of this here and let's go back to the uh, other areas and let's just see how this plays out. So if I wanted to go in then and say, okay, I'm going to go back to my main clinic and I want to be able to add uh, a relationship with Bob Weston from the Vista clinic here, then what I would do is I already have a connections grid here. So I'm, we'll see that filled in once we create the record, but I'm going to come up to the, uh, command bar and I'm going to click on connect and I'm just going to click on the to another. That's pretty much standard when you, when you see your connections on the, uh, ribbon up there. The new connection form pops open and as you can see it's already filled in for us the specialist clinic main headquarters account record as the connected from because that's where I'm starting this connection record from. And as this role what I'm going to do is just pop in other there and it's going to say okay well I know that that has to be the other account location. And then because the fact that we did the matching, created the matching relationships or the reciprocal relationships, this uh, connection already knows that other work location has to be the other role that I'm trying to define. So that's great. And then the other thing I need to do then is just come in and uh, find Bob. And let's see. Sorry, there seems to be a bug in the um, use of name. If you put uh, some search criteria in here and tab out of it, it doesn't seem to like that. Um, and it just kind of goes on and on. So we're going to have to do it the old fashioned way and use the lookup here. So sorry about that. Uh, and then I need to obviously change this lookup to look in the contacts. And there's my uh, subject here, Bob. So now I've got Bob Weston as connected to the specialist clinic and on Bob's side, it's another work location for him. And on the account side, it's an, uh, an, an other account location. And again, this wording and the naming here is a little clumsy. So you may come up with a, a much better uh, definition of, of terms for that. But um, the other thing is then I can go in here and uh, update the description, etc. Then A2, I could add other fields, but we're not going to do that now. We're just going to go ahead and save and close right here. And now what I can do is I've got specialist clinic. I can see here my, you know, permanent primary employees, if you will. And then I have also associations to this account that uh, are related to Bob Weston. If I click on here, I'll open up his uh, contact record. But if I obviously double click here in the white space, I'll get a, uh, uh, that connection record to pop up again. And uh, it's easy for me to see exactly what's going on. I've got all these people potentially now that I can look at. And, and the, the thing about this is, you know, if you've got salespeople visiting multiple offices, it's nice to know maybe that Dr. X is in the, this uh, one office on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And then the other two days of the week, he's in the other office. So you can kind of figure that out. If you start looking at this information, you could add fields to note what days he's in which office, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, um, so that's kind of how that works. We've got the connection records there, very handy. Uh, we said we could also add other fields. Then the other nice thing is we could go in here and actually do an advanced find uh, against the connection records to kind of get a look at them globally as opposed to just focusing on one account or one uh, contact at a time. And of course, um, let's see, if I go down to my connections and I have previously created a uh, view, personal view, this active connections for, oops, alternate connections. And that was 
I was doing some testing there and I used a different name. So let's just use the account, other account designation here. Uh, okay, come on. Let's take this out of here, sorry. There we go. Okay, so let's run this and see what we get. So now we get, you know, uh, outside of the forms, we can go ahead and query that data and take a look at those things as far as connection records at, based on a specific role. So now I could do, you know, if there was 50 of them or 100 of them, whatever the number is, I could go through and just kind of overlook, uh, look over those and see if they were relevant and if I needed to make any changes, etc. cetera. Um, the other nice thing you can do is uh, create like workflows, for example, to create those connection records. And so, for example, when some person moves from one company to another, uh, let's say a salesperson that you're used to working with, you can have the system create a uh, connection record automatically that is says, you know, here's my former company and here, you know, he was a former employee and then date that as of the, uh, you know, date of the execution of the workflow. So you can kind of get a history in uh, an audit trail through the connection records of um, his his uh, travels throughout the different companies, etc. One last thing here before we go. Um, you cannot display currently anyway on the mobile tablet client these connection um, subgrids and so your forms will not be able to display this if you're using a tablet but on the web client it works just fine so anyway thanks for uh, tuning in and i hope you've learned a little bit about connections we appreciate your uh, attendance and if you have any questions or whatever email us uh, let's go ahead and put this up and, um, oops, well darn it, so much for technical stuff, huh? Let's get this at the end, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, come on. Thank you very much for your time and for uh, putting up with me at that last part there. So if you have any questions, just email us at info at dying365pros.com or you can call us at 760-585-4248. Thank you very much again and have a nice day. Bye.